Hello and welcome to this video on making your own DNA for genetic experiments. cDNA is the acronym used for complementary DNA, which is distinct but related to ordinary DNA. cDNA is produced as part of genetic tests. When you have a gene in a cell functioning, it has to undergo a process of translation. This takes a sequence of nucleotides that correspond with a final function and uses them like blueprints. The exact process varies slightly, but broadly adheres to the following steps. The DNA in chromatin is unwound from its spool. Then the two strands of the helix are split. This then lets a small molecule run along and translate the DNA strand in that relevant area. This then gets put out as RNA, which can then be processed into protein, instruction, regulation, and more. The more active a gene is, the more of this RNA that is produced. This direct association with the translation rate concentration, and activity is important in any genetic test. This is because you cannot measure the DNA directly, as that should always be the same, except when the cells are dividing. You will always have the same number of copies of the gene in your genome. To know how active the gene is, that figure is essential. The problem is that you cannot measure the RNA very easily, as it is mixed up with other RNA and things which will mess with your results. Fortunately, we have the technology to reverse the RNA and make a version of DNA from it that can be used to perpetually repeat the process of translating it into RNA. This synthesized DNA is complementary DNA. The technological leap has been adding a quantifiable marker to the RNA as it is copied from the DNA we have made. As the amount of RNA increases, so does the marker and we can measure it. This is often done in a PCR reaction or by binding it to a large molecule which becomes trapped in gel. The more detailed process involves taking your tissue or cell sample, trying to extract the whole of the inner contents of it by somehow destroying or lysing the material. This produces a mixture of protein, nucleic material, and other effectively random crap. This mixture then needs to be separated out so that you only have the nucleotide material in an easily accessed layer. This is taken out and it is treated in a way that then further separates out the DNA and RNA. The RNA is then extracted and processed further to remove something called the poly A tail. This is normally used to try and maintain the integrity of the RNA molecule within the cell and prevent it spontaneously degrading. Now that the RNA molecule is really accessible and easily read, a process and a system called reverse transcriptase is added, along with deoxynucleotides. These are what take the RNA molecule, those nucleotides, and combine the two to create a DNA molecule from the messenger RNA that should correspond directly to it. This is your synthetic DNA. In an ideal world, you would be able to make many copies of your RNA molecule using this technique. You can then use a DNA polymerase to create a complementary stand to your complementary DNA, creating two identical sequences that match up. Complementary DNA is often used in gene cloning or in the creation of a library of genes. 
Scientists can take these when mass produced and move them from one cell through this process of replication and into another cell to produce new compounds. A good example of this is the production of insulin. Only targeting or at least replicating the area of the sequence relevant to the production of a molecule is important. In some cases, if you were to move the entire gene and not just the small part responsible for the product, you would find that the regulatory sections prevent the expression of the product. This could be because there is not the right input to get the right output. This is also why most reverse transcriptases will use a template and a very short primer to target its location and ensure only the synthesis of the first part of the complementary DNA that is a direct template for further experiments. Most commonly, this is PCR. In order to conduct the PCR reaction, the products of cDNA synthesis must be known. That is to say, the sequence of nucleotides that the gene is made from. The reason for this is simple. You use something called a primer in PCR reactions. This must be matched almost perfectly with the cDNA. If the primer or cDNA is too broad, you might link with the wrong thing. Too narrow and it will miss. Even if you create a primer that is exactly the right size, you might have the wrong sequence and you will link with something else. It must be just the right size and have just the right sequence for what is effectively a lock and key model between primers and cDNA. When creating your cDNA, you really do need to check the purity of the RNA before going on to synthesis. This table provides a very handy reference of some possible contaminants and what UV spectroscopic measures will mean when you test the purity of your sample. cDNA is the basis of many further and more technical molecular genetic techniques. It's also the means by which we can create synthetic cells, genetically modify some organisms, and is the foundational method for many medicines that are essential for life now that are based on biological compounds like insulin. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Post any questions, suggestions, or comments you may have below.